I made the papers one month ago. Last night, at the airport in Bogota, Colombia, I was denied boarding, potentially forcing me to cancel the entire trip. I, I mean, at this point, I'm just clutching at straws, anything, just do anything to make this happen. This is a video about my very long, complicated and slightly dramatic journey towards Antarctica. The plan is to fly from Canada, where I spent Christmas, all the way down the American continents via a long layover in Bogota in Colombia to Punta Arenas in Chile, where I would catch a flight to Union Glacier in Antarctica. So a quick background. Mount Vincent is the tallest mountain in Antarctica and one of the famous seven summits. I had been planning to climb it for a couple of months, spending a ridiculous amount of time, energy and money on the expedition. I suppose I hadn't suspected that flying there might be more challenging than climbing it. Anyway, let's go back in time quickly to my very first flight, leaving New Brunswick for Montreal. Here's the thing with these tiny planes. I'm not really scared that they're gonna crash or anything like that. My main fear is that my backpack, which is always giant, won't fit in and they'll have to put it in storage and it'll be a giant pain. Anyway, it's like minus 14 degrees outside and I'm on my way to Montreal. Let's go. It's all good. It fit inside. Honestly, the moment I get on the plane, it's just utter chaos. My stuff ends up everywhere, just piles of things. Welcome to Montreal. Now I've got a layover here for about 10 or 12 hours. Okay. Always take the stairs. Always take the stairs. Not the escalators. Come on, like you're sitting down for hours at a time inside a plane. So might as well move a little bit more on the stairs. On my layover here in Montreal, I have booked myself an express one hour PCR test, which will cost 300 Canadian dollars. Probably the most I've ever paid for a PCR test, but there was really no other solution. So I'm gonna try and see if I can get it done a little bit ahead of time, a little bit ahead of schedule, so that I have more time to explore Montreal. from Canada where So these are my three out Vulnerable <laughs> assets Glacier glasses like this oh, I finally have the perfect excuse <laughs> So these are glacier glass, glacier glass, <laughs> um, which is cool on earth and all this energy gels. It's been dark. <laughs> Alright, finally got my COVID test results. Yes, negative. Yes. Alright, let's go have some fun. Actually, no fun just yet. I almost forgot that I still need to get my negative result printed and then I need to upload it online to the Chilean government's immigration website so they can officially approve it. I like have to declare my test result before arriving because clearly a test result by itself is no longer enough. I still have some work to do. Merci. Well, that took me a little bit longer than expected and I now have three and a half hours until my next flight. So I guess um, 
we're not gonna be sightseeing Montreal in this video. <laughs> Maybe next time. All right, I'm gonna go and head into the patches. They have repeated this warning at least four times in the last seven minutes, I swear. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to say. What I wanted to say is that whenever you see these like travel videos, you know, like going from one place to the next, flying somewhere cool, they're always traveling business or first class, you know? And there's always like the big thumbnail with the big first class airplane seat and the super amazing meal. You're not gonna be getting any of that experience in this vlog because I travel economy. I just, that's just what I do. I've only flown business once. One more. No, not again. This is the final boarding call for Royal Jordanian Airlines Flight 270. Service to Oman. What is happening? All passengers should come back to Oman. No. I can't handle this. Oh my god. Stop. I have literally never in my entire life heard a flight called out so many times. Either there is an error or nobody's at the gate. <laughs> All right, when the Amman announcements finally stopped, yay, my Bogota flight was announced and it was time to board. All right, let's talk socially acceptable and socially unacceptable behaviors on a plane. Taking off your shoes, socially acceptable. Going to the bathroom, just in your socks, probably not to be avoided. Reclining your seat, yeah, I mean, that's what it's for, I guess, even if it makes other people uncomfortable. Reclining your seats during meal times, nope. Taking off your mask, eh, nowadays, not really. Oh, maybe one day. I like my travels pretty wild, but my flights uneventful. say 90% of the passengers already have their luggage. <laughs> Would you believe I put priority tags on my luggage? <laughs> it never works. Yep, those priority tags really didn't work. Time to move on. Welcome to Bogota. Columbia. I'm only here for like a day, less than a day. I'm leaving in 15 hours, but maybe, maybe, maybe I might just get to see something. But first, before I collapse, I'm gonna head to the airport hotel and just catch a couple hours of sleep. I mean, it's 5 a.m., so let's say four or five hour nap, and then we're gonna head into Bogota. That hotel schedule could have come sooner. And the shuttle's still not here, hopefully soon. You know that feeling when you're waiting for someone or something and you're like, you're just waiting and waiting and they're late and you're like, no, five more minutes. I'll just give them five more minutes, okay? Two more minutes. And you're waiting and waiting and waiting, hoping and hoping and hoping and then it's like, it's been an hour and a half, they're still not there. That's exactly what's happened here. Should have taken a text. Woohoo, there it is, finally. Oh my god, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. <laughs> nope, no sleep for me. 
Since it's still only the beginning of January and my New Year's resolutions are still feeling super strong, I'm gonna hold on to them with all of my might until my resolve inevitably weakens in a few weeks. I don't always do New Year's resolutions, but this year I made some. And I approached them slightly differently from all the years before. So I didn't just say to myself, oh, I wanna get stronger or I wanna get fitter. No, I was like, by the end of the year, I'm gonna run a 150 kilometer ultra marathon. What do I need to do in order to get there? <laughs> like in general, I just wanna be doing more adventures, more like endurance stuff in the outdoors and the mountains. So a big part of that is just committing to strength workouts, as dull and boring as that may sound to some of you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a huge part of it. So before I head out anywhere in Bogota, let's do a workout. of the city it's so green and lush i have missed this so much honestly i've been surrounded by snow and <laughs> rainers over the last couple of months it's really nice to see this before heading out onto the iciest continent of them all i found something really special to do here today in bogota and that is a tour of egipto which is one of Bogota's most infamous neighborhoods, and not just in the past, but still today. So I've got a really special tour of guys showing me around the neighborhood today. Here we go. Hello, my name is Felipe. I'm helping you with the translations here in the neighborhood. Thanks, Felipe. Hi, my name is Harold. Nice to meet you. Welcome to my neighborhood, AG. Yeah. <laughs> my name is Tio Memo. Awesome. Breaking Borders is a Es un proyecto que nació a hacer labor social, hacemos labor social acá en el barrio, eh, trabajamos con turismo comunitario, nació con la idea de dar transformación y cambio, oportunidad en un territorio donde, donde ha sido eh, enfocado y estigmatizado como delincuentes por falta de una oportunidad, por eso es que nos llamamos Breaking Borders para romper esas fronteras. These murals were gifted to the residents of Egipto by street artists. Each of them represents the struggles of Egypto's marginalized and stigmatized community, their story. There is nothing romantic about this. The reality is, the neighborhood doesn't have a school, or a nursery, or a hospital, or a clinic. Harold's mission and the Breaking Borders mission is to help bring jobs and opportunity and infrastructure to Egypto so that the people of the neighborhood don't have to resort to violence. I got back from town a little late, so I had to rush over to the airport. Little did I know, things were about to take a pretty dramatic turn. While trying to check in, I was denied boarding. I was denied entry into Chile. And Chile is where I had to fly in order to make it to my Mount Vincent expedition in Antarctica, coming up in just four days. I made the papers one month ago, at the beginning of December, yes. So you might be wondering what on earth is going on and honestly I'm wondering the same. Last night after leaving the airport and coming back to Bogota I just did not have the mental strength to record a video or talk about what had happened but here's the basic scoop. Last night at the airport in Bogota, Colombia, I was denied boarding so basically denied entrance to Chile. And Chile is where I need to go in order to catch my flight to climb Mount Vincent, the tallest mountain in Antarctica. So basically, these days, if you're trying to enter Chile, what happens is that you have to submit your full vaccination record, three vaccinations, which I did. You have to fill out a whole form that will certify your vaccinations in Chile a month before your trip, because it can take up to a month. I did that at the beginning of December. Then you still have to get travel insurance, you still have to get a PCR test, all the standard things. But here is the thing. The Chilean local vaccination system does not properly recognize European vaccinations. So instead of 
registering my three vaccinations, it only registered one. I don't know why. I am currently trying to find a way to resolve this situation, but if I don't leave Bogota in the next 36 hours, I will not be able to get to Chile on time for my flight to Antarctica, therefore potentially forcing me to cancel the entire trip. And I'm calm right now, but I didn't want to talk to the camera last night because <laughs> I really experienced something like a breakdown at the airport and <sighs> this is very, very disappointing. I don't understand this whole system. Like, first of all, why should I get my vaccine locally approved? But even if I do, even if that is a requirement, then make it efficient. There's a lot of people trying to help me, which is amazing. I really did not expect this. And really, you know, one person even went in person to the health ministry in Santiago to help me. Thank you, Gabrielle. <laughs> um, and I was just sent a document to fill out. Maybe this one can do something. Um, so I'm just really trying everything. I'm just really trying to do anything that's possible. And then suddenly the tides changed. Seems like they just approved one extra vaccine. Oh my god! Okay, I'm just gonna put in all this new info that I need to get this other declaration. This is crazy. This is... Chile has like the craziest system I have ever come across. I don't like it. Oh my god, please, 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 let it happen. Huh. Oh my god! It worked! Oh my god, it worked! Oh my god! Okay, now I have to rebook my flight for today. Oh my god, I really hope this works. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, this is such... Oh my god, this is like the most stressful situation I've ever been in. I am back at the airport with a new resolve. I am determined to make this work. This is happening. I've got all the documents lined up, I think. And this is gonna happen. There's just no way this is not gonna happen. Let's see if it happens. Problem. This time it's not anything to do with the vaccination. This time it's that I don't have a flight back. We need to make sure that you have a ticket out from Chile. Literally just booking the cheapest flight out of Chile that I can find. <laughs> Stop thinking about it. Just do it. Oh, I hope this is it. I got the ticket. <laughs> I'm allowed to board today, which is surreal because yesterday I remember being here and being so anxious and distraught. I know it may have seemed like it's just a trip but it's not just any trip. It's, it's a really big one and it was a really big one for me because the last few months honestly I haven't been feeling very well. I've been feeling really low and this trip, this climb was the only thing that kept me motivated to get out, to work out, to go running, to work and that's why it was so important and that's why the, the the possibility of it not happening was just devastating to me so i okay i'm not gonna say anything i'm not gonna celebrate until i land in punta arenas in chile <laughs> so let's go and board the plane i guess i couldn't quite believe that i was about to get on that plane it was all thanks to someone from my instagram community who helped me out with the chilean vaccine system I just wanted to show you the plane, it's right there, and I'm so excited to be getting on it. I've never been this excited to get on the plane. After a six hour flight, I was finally in Santiago, Chile. But the drama hasn't quite ended yet. My flight had been delayed by an hour, and the health check and PCR test lines at Santiago airport were massive. So the people in the queue were super, super nice. They let me through because I have 30 minutes left until my flight and I still have to pick up my luggage and recheck in. So I'm just running and just quite hoping to make it. This journey was truly proving to be a test of patience. 
Okay, I've got my luggage and now I have to run upstairs to check in, to check it in again. It's the same airline, domestic flight. For some reason, you need to check in your luggage again. And I have 20 minutes until my flight leaves, so I really, I really don't think I'm gonna make it. Okay, I have officially missed my flight to Punta Arenas. But at least I made it into Chile. <laughs> so, good news and bad news always balance each other out, don't they? So I'm just waiting here in the queue to the commercial office of LATAM, the ticket office, to see if they can change my flight. No more drama. Hopefully this is it. So here it was, the home run. This thing was actually happening. I sobbed and sobbed on the plane, tears of pure joy and relief. The gods of adventure had given me their blessing. I can't actually believe it. I really can't believe it, but I made it. <laughs> I made it. I made it to Punta Arenas, one of the southernmost points in South America. And guess what? Tomorrow, tomorrow, we leave for Antarctica. Life. Life. <laughs> I guess see you on the seventh continent. <laughs>